to send out laborers to do something. First part of the solution is that we're praying for help. We're praying for laborers. Praying for others God wants to raise up to assist in this process. Shepherding the sheep or laboring in the harvest. Are we praying? Are we really praying? Not just one general, Lord, we need some help here. Would you please provide? Are we genuinely asking God to bring along the right group of people to help? And uh, sometimes we think if we pray once, that's the, the job is done. And Jesus is talking about serious praying over a period of time, if necessary, that God would work in remarkable kind of ways, raising up some other folks to be laborers with us or shepherds with us in responsibility for touching other people. Are we genuinely praying about this? <clears throat> You remember in Luke's Gospel, when Jesus is about to form the group of 12, a lot of other folks are more generally interested in a larger group of disciples, but for the formation of that specific kind of group, Luke tells us he spent all night in prayer. Don't mean he hadn't prayed before this, but a concentrated period of time. I mean, that's, that's 8 to 12 hours Jesus spent praying over who ought to be involved in this group. He was not taking this lightly. And he wasn't modeling it lightly. Are we praying carefully at some length? Are we praying who ought to be in the group that God's laying on our hearts here, pulling together? Some, you know, pretty, pretty obvious pretty quick. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, you know, uh, doesn't take a lot of, you know, some, they, they've already expressed enough kind of interest. Jesus is there, there, but what about these other guys? Are we really praying and asking God, who does God want? And, and the, part of the reason for prayer is a reminder to us. This isn't a matter of who we want to choose to be in the group, because they're people we happen to like. But who does God want to choose to be in the are we praying enough so we get past, God, this is the kind of person I'd like, or I really wish, because I think he would be good, or for some other reason? Say, Lord, who do you want to be in the group, even if it's somebody that I might not have chosen, or I might have overlooked? So, uh, pray, serious pray, is uh, start here. And then the second thing is, uh, Jesus himself has begun to train disciples for this whole process. Verse 10, chapter 1. Called to him as twelve disciples, gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal every disease and every infirmity. These twelve Jesus sent out, charging them, and then were charged. So he not only has prayed, but he has trained disciples. The solution is there are not enough laborers for the harvest. Are we investing in some people so they can be laborers of the harvest? Shepherds of the sheep. Are we raising them up? Are we pray for them? Are we training them? Now, <clears throat> there are a couple of keys to this solution that we don't want to miss. is the principle of multiplication. <laughs> and it works like this. Jesus starts out and uh, he's training 12 guys. When we 
we get over to Luke chapter 10, Jesus calls another group together to send them out, interestingly enough, giving the, that second group almost the same instructions as he gives the 12 here in Matthew chapter 10. That group is uh, referred to as the 70. 70 sends them out some manuscripts. We have 72 with regard to this. Uh, where did the 70 come from? Jesus get contact with that many other people? We don't have all the answers. But suppose <clears throat> um, suppose each of the disciples had attracted, helped attract to Jesus five other people. Um, five twelve would be uh, sixty. And if the 12 were included in that group, that's my, why some manuscripts have 72, that would count for the whole, that's how to do it. Five is about a reasonable size for a group. Uh, we don't have any record of this, but you, you see we're getting some pretty significant multiplication. Suppose the 70 uh, not only did their work of ministry in a public kind of way, but each uh, were involved in discipling another five and brought five to Jesus and began to change their lives. Uh, if, the se if all the 70 did that, how many more would that be the next time around? For your math, here's a quick answer. It's 350. <laughs> Suppose the 350 were sent out to do ministry in a variety of ways, and the 350 also invested in each of them and five other people, then <coughs> you've got 1,750 people. <coughs> now, <clears throat> what you don't want to miss here is from the four generations of disciple making here, uh, starting with Jesus, you, you, you're ended up here with something uh, like 2,000 people involved in serious discipleship. Now you say, yeah, but uh, realistically, that's probably um, a bit too many <coughs> for, because uh, Jesus started with 12, and realistically, for, for many of us to disciple 12 people is, is, is more than we can handle. And uh, let's start with something small. The point here is that if you're discipling, you're multiplying. <clears throat> At the close of one school year, I pulled together all the leaders <clears throat> in discipleship groups we had at Asbury. And I was uh, coordinating a group, and there were, I think there were, five or six of us maybe in that uh, leadership team of folks that I had been discipling who were also discipling some other folks. And uh, we finished. I just took out a sheet of paper and I said, uh, uh, thing, well, how many folks were you discipling? And he said, uh, he drew the list. And then the next guy, how many are in your group? And the next guy, how many are in your group? And the next guy, and so we drew a list of kind of things here. Says, Are any of the guys you're discipling themselves? And several of them were. And uh, so we drew out the list here. <clears throat> and uh, we began to count up. I mean, this is the end, end of the year. We, we counted up here what we had starting with the small group that the guys that I was investing in, and, uh, and there were 52 people meeting in the, in the group. Now, if uh, a couple thousand is, is, is too many, 52 isn't an, an unreasonable number to, and, and, it, and it, it happened, 
happens because there's multiplication. You weren't just adding a few more people. You're creating disciples who will be disciple makers so things multiply. Now, part of the reason is just to say that challenge before us. This is how God wants to touch a world. Not just a few people adding more folks to the kingdom, but the making of disciples creates the possibility for multiplication. With a world population, what is it, six million? I mean, it keeps going so fast you can't keep up. You're tired of the map. Uh, far more people alive today than were alive when Jesus was born. In fact, hear me carefully. In fact, do you realize that in our lifetime, half the people who have ever lived on the earth are alive today. Did you hear what I said? Say it again. <laughs> Half the people who have ever lived at any time in the past are alive today. Wow. That means you and I have a chance and the incredible privilege of touching half the people who have ever lived on the face of the earth. And because of the development of technology and means of communication, they're in any place on the earth that's not, you can't communicate. 